Good morning and welcome to the celebration of the Eucharist with the Church of the Resurrection in Bryanston. Welcome to all subscribers and viewers on our YouTube channel. Today we celebrate Tuesday of the 14th week in Ordinary Time. The antiphons are on page 1015 and readings are on page 1024 of the Daily Missal. This Mass is being offered for the repose of the souls of Teresa Gomez and Jose de Freitas. The entrance antiphon, Your merciful love, O God, we have received in the midst of your temple. Your praise, O God, like your name, reaches the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with saving justice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome to our celebration of the Eucharist today. We acknowledge God's limitless compassion as we confess our sins. You are light in our darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Your strength in our weakness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Your forgiveness in our sinfulness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, in the abasement of your Son, you have raised up a fallen world. Fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, Jacob arose at night and took his two wives, his two maids and his 11 children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. And Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And Jacob's thigh was put out of joint, and he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, Your name shall no, long, no more be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Tell me, I pray, your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him, and he passed Penuel, limping because of his thigh. Therefore, to this day, 
the Israelites do not eat the sinew of the hip, which is upon the hollow of the thigh, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh on the sinew of the hip. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now pray the responsorial psalm. In justice I shall behold your face. O Lord, hear a cause that is just. Pay heed to my cry. Turn your ear to my prayer. No deceit is on my lips. From you may my justice come forth. Your eyes discern what is upright. Search my heart and visit me by night. Test me by fire, and you will find no wrong in me. To you I call, for you will surely heed me, O God. Turn your ear to me, hear my words. Display your merciful love. By your right hand you deliver from their foes those who put their trust in you. Guard me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. As for me, in justice I shall behold your face. When I awake, I shall be filled with the vision of your presence. In justice I shall behold your face. Please stand for the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my own, and my own know me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, behold, a mute demoniac was brought to Jesus. And when the demon had been cast out, the mute man spoke, and the crowds marveled, saying, Never was anything like this seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, He casts out demons by the prince of demons. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every infirmity. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray, therefore, the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A life change is mentioned in the Gospel and uh, we also have a great life change as well in the reading from Genesis. So in the Gospel we heard how Jesus saves a man from demonic possession and suddenly the man was cured and could speak again and his entire life transformed. The story from the book of Genesis describes Jacob wrestling all night long with some unseen force. In the end, Jacob finds that he's been wrestling with God. And for this reason, he named the place Peniel. It's a Hebrew word meaning face of God. He's amazed to have survived. He said, I've seen God face to face, yet my life has been spared. Because this was unusual in a time when people believed that nobody could see the face of God and live. The reference here is to the events in Exodus 33, verse 20. Jacob had his dramatic nighttime struggle while returning from Haran 
to the Promised Land. The Promised Land would eventually be named Israel after him. His future is foretold. You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, because you have contended with divine and human beings and have prevailed. His future life was markedly different from his past and more clearly under God's guiding providence. For the rest of his life, Jacob carried a notable limp after his wrestling with the angel. Sometimes we too can no longer stand as tall as before. We may hear God's call to us anew, asking us to make a new and a different contribution to the life of others. And so in Jacob's story, we can find a new type of strength. In today's Gospel, we see a contrast between how ordinary folk admired Jesus' miracles and how the Pharisees scorned them. The people said, Nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. The Pharisees said, It is through the prince of devils that he casts out devils. The people saw God at work in what Jesus was doing. The Pharisees imagined Satan was working in him. It's hard to imagine a more contrasting response. The people, and not the Pharisees, were attuned to the presence and action of God in Jesus. And so this Gospel invites us to ask ourselves, to what extent do I sense the presence of God around me, especially in the good that other people are doing? We can be prone to objecting to things and missing the good that is actually there. We can be more attuned to noticing what's wrong than what's right. While never being blind to evil and sin, we need to be open to how the Lord is at work in our lives and in the lives of others. Jesus was sensitive to the good in others, even when they failed to see it for themselves. So we need to adopt that positive way of seeing things and not highlighting the negative all the time. And now we offer up our prayers and petitions to the Lord. We pray for the shepherds of the church, that they may come to the rescue of those who are troubled and abandoned, teaching them as Jesus did. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who wrestle with God in earnest prayer and obedient action, that they may obtain grace and mercy for the oppressed and those who are longing for the blessing of peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for vocations that we may obtain from the master of the harvest good and holy laborers together in the abundance of souls thirsting for God's kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that the Lord may have compassion for all those who are suffering from illness, heartbreak, or emotional hardship by saving and curing them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that Jesus' heart may be moved with pity for our dear ones who have died and that we may purify them quickly to come into his glorious kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, you traveled through towns and villages curing every disease and illness. Come to our aid now in the midst of the spread of the COVID-19 virus, that we may experience your healing love. Heal those who are sick with the virus. 
May they regain, regain their strength and health through quality medical care. Heal us from fear, misinformation and lies which prevent nations from working together and neighbours from helping one another. Jesus Christ, healer of all, stay by our side in this time of uncertainty and sorrow. Be with the families of those who are sick or have died, as they worry and grieve. Defend them from illness and despair. May they know your peace. Be with the doctors, nurses, researchers, and all medical professionals who seek to heal and help those affected and who put themselves at risk in the process. May they know, may they know your protection and peace. Be with the leaders of South Africa. Give them the wisdom to enable a swift rollout of the vaccines for all our people. Jesus Christ, stay with us as we endure and mourn, persist and prepare. In place of our, of our anxiety, give us your peace. Jesus Christ, heal us. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'll use the common preface number five and the second Eucharistic prayer. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, his death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you as without end. We acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Booty, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us pray for peace, for peace in our hearts.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Amen. The communion antiphon. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed the man who seeks refuge in him. And I invite all who are participating via our YouTube channel to make your own act of spiritual communion at this moment. My Jesus, I believe you are really here in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you more than anything in the world and I hunger to receive you. But since I cannot receive communion at this moment, feed my soul spiritually. I unite myself to you now, as I do when I receive you. Amen. We pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.